All right, folks, it's Matthew. We're back, and we're now going to start case 29 in East Asia. Thanks to these three for helping me out. A death wish. Bureau headquarters in Tokyo. Matthew, while in Korea, we learned that Sombra is brainwashing orphan children. We know they're moving the kids from Korea to Japan, but why are they brainwashing them? We have no idea. But why they're brainwashing them, we have no idea. We also found a photo of Ronan that places him in an arcade here in Tokyo surrounded by children. We have strong reason to believe he's a somber agent. Matthew, we came here looking for him. Hopefully he'll have some answers for us. We've got to get to the bottom of this before it's too late for those children. If we want to uncover the truth behind Sombra's evil plan, we've got to go where the kids are, the arcade. Matthew, it's time to take pole position when it comes to Sombra. We're off to the arcade. Alrighty. I get to share coin. You'll find the one amazing piece of diamond jewelry she sure love. That's why he went to Jared. IT security is a global concern. Well, we have top of the line technology that uh, make sure that we have protection for native strengths. Kaspersky is a cyber security company. And right now we have intelligence services that protect all right. customers and all people. The graduates we have hired from ITD Tech bring to the table deep knowledge on IT technologies, especially on information security, and also soft skills that help Ooh. us to support our customers worldwide. That's why we are today a support body. service for Latin America. IT Tech grants are help us to achieve our goals. Money, foreign photo, scholarships and financial badge for students who qualify. Call 800 327 1172. A lot of clues here. Matthew, did that guy stab himself in the stomach? Is that, is this what's called Harakiri? Wait, there's a gunshot to his head, and no gun to be found near the body. This isn't a suicide, Matthew. We've got ourselves another murder. And our dead guy is none other than Yucho Watsanabe, the Oyabun or family boss of the Watsanabe Gumi Yakuza organization. Matthew, we're in heavy Yakuza territory and these Japanese gangsters don't play around. Maybe our victim got caught up in some gangland disputes. Regardless, we need to find out what made it game over for this guy so we can continue with our investigation of Sombra. Did you find any clues? A ripped up photo in our cave full of photo booths isn't surprising, but what's on it could be a lead. I'll grab the tape. Good idea, Matthew. That faded name badge could lead us to a witness or at least an employee. Let's dust it. You want to see what that digital keypad opens up? If you can unlock it, we'll solve that mystery. Matthew, it's game on. Let's find us a killer. I know I need to uh, get some stars, so sit tight, folks. Alright, I got six stars. Let's examine the torn. Or actually, let's uh, do the badge first. Oh my god, it's Sanjay. Matthew, does the name on that badge say Sanjay Korapati? As in the Sanjay we saw we just saw in Beijing? But I thought he was going to Seoul. And it says he's the arcade assistant. What's Sanjay doing in Tokyo working at an arcade? That kid sure gets around. 
Well, Matthew, a murder in his place of employment means we'll definitely need to talk to Sanjay. About his job at the arcade. Ranger Matthew, what a surprise to see you. Welcome to the Kabuki Cho Game Center. Sanjay, what are you doing in Tokyo? Weren't you headed to Seoul for a brighter future? This is my brighter future. I work here. I help run this place. As I was leaving Beijing, I ran into one of the other kids. They told me of the opportunity to work here, so I came to Tokyo. Here, I am important. I contribute and do my duty. You keep using these words, contribute and duty. Is it somber making you talk like this? Be careful, they're dangerous. <clears throat> Don't worry, Ranger Matthew. I am not weak. I can fend for myself. That photo you taped together must have come from one of these photo booths around here, Matthew. Let's take a photo together. Oh, you're right. That man lurking in the back of the photo is Yuto. But who's that girl with him? Whoever she is, she doesn't look happy about our victim being in that photo with her. Matthew, let's take out the arcade and see if we can talk to this girl with purple hair. Suzuki Sakura. Okay. About the photo booth photo. Miss, we're here invest we're investigating the murder of Yuto Watanabe. Watanabe san is dead? I'm very sorry to hear that. We found this photo booth picture you took. You don't look very pleased with him. What happened? I come here to take photos and play games, but Watanabe san was always making inappropriate comments to me. I was always very uncomfortable. This game center has the best games in Tokyo. But an old man like him shouldn't do such things to his customers. I see. Thank you for the information, Miss Suzuki. Please stay close by. We might need to ask you some more questions later. Okay. Oh no. Why did I think that was CBS? Unbelievable. Matthew, you've decoded the combination for the keypad, but I don't see what it did. Wait, did that wall just swing open? Whoa, cool. You've unlocked an entrance to a secret room. Let's search this secret room before anyone arrives. I know I'm gonna have to get some more stars, so after this, sit tight. Special 
17th already. Cool. Biotin can provide soothing relief, and it helps keep your mouth healthy, too. Biotin. Matthew, this secret room connected to the arcade appears to be an office, and knowing that our victim was head Yakuza, I bet you this was his office. We just walked into the lion's den, Matthew. But let's be quick, because where there's one Yakuza, there are many. That sake set is for two, and it's covered in blood. I'm sure a sample of that blood will give us some answers. Who are these envelopes stuck with cash lying around? I thought it was only in movies. Matthew, it does look like something's written on the envelope, but it's too faded to read. Probably from all the hands it's greased. Let's dust it. Drafting and design, business, and criminal justice. We believe education is a sound investment. At ITT Technical Institute, we're working to help reduce the cost for eligible students who qualify. All right, I'll get some stars, so sit tight. All right, folks, I got some more stars. Let's examine the sake set. Just hit the nine. Now that we've got that blood sample from the sake set, we should get it to, to Lars for analysis. Three hours. Zawa, take this for the children, Yuto. The note on the envelope reads, Ozawa, take this for the children, and it's signed by our victim. Ozawa? That's the last name of the suspected somber agent we've been looking for. Ronan Ozawa. We found him. How does Ronan know Yuto? And what do Samba and the Yakuza have to do with each other? Matthew, I don't like the looks of this. We knew Ronan was bad news. We just need to find out how bad he really is. Let's go grill him. About his connection? Granger Matthew, what brings you to Tokyo? We came looking for you to ask you about the photo of you surrounded by children. But now I want to know why there was an envelope full of cash addressed to you on the top of Yuko Watan Yuta Watanabe's desk. Mr. Watanabe was a benevolent man, always looking out for the needs of his community. Does this mean the victim gave you money for the somber children? That's quite thoughtful for a Yuka Yakuza kingpin. Ronan, we know you're somber, so what does somber want with the Yakuza, and what's in it for you? Still, about, still on about that, huh, Ranger Matthew? Call it what you like, I'm just here to take care of the children. Don't get too comfortable, Mr. Ozawa. Ranger Matthew and I are watching you like a Japanese sparrowhawk, and we have ways of making people talk. Okay, I barely have any time left, so that's it for now, and I'll see you guys for when these two run their courses. Alright folks, it's Matthew, we're back, and we're now going to get the results of the victim's body, the autopsy. Konnichiwa, Matthew, this is quite the high-profile case. Tell me about it, what did you find out? I believe the murder is personal. Your victim was shot point-blank in the head with a 45 caliber pistol. It was the shot that killed him. My examination of the self-inflicted stabbing indicates your victim knew his fate and tried to take matters into his own hands. The Japanese suicide ritual of seppuku, also known as harakiri, is normally attempted when the person prefers to die an honorable death at their own hands instead of being disgraced. Furthermore, I discovered your killer as a hobby. There was an origami crane stuffed in the victim's suit jacket pocket with a message written on it. This is number 1000. Now you are dead. Fun fact, a Japanese legend promises that anyone who folds a thousand origami cranes will be granted a wish. Seems like your killer's wish came true. A thousand origami cranes? 
I guess that means the killer can hold a grudge, but it also means they know origami. Matthew, no need to make a thousand cranes for our wish to come true. We'll find our paper folding perpetrator before they can origami themselves another murder. Shades of Sadako and a thousand cranes much? I think so. Saiken do, Matthew. Sake do to you, too. Sake do to you, too, bro. I didn't say sake, dude. I said saiken do. It's what's up in Japanese. Ah, right. Saiken do. Speaking of sake, any news on that blood sample Matthew pulled from the sake set? Totes. With the sample, I created a DNA profile. The blood belongs to your victim. Our victim's blood is on the sake set, but it wasn't at the crime scene. I found that odd too, so I chatted with the wifey. Seems your victim was shot in the shoulder before receiving the fatal shot in the head. The shot in the shoulder must have happened in the office while the one in the head happened in the arcade next door. Now about the sake, it's the national drink of Japan, often used for ceremonial purposes like Yakuza initiation ceremonies. As the sake serving was for two people, my guess is your victim drink was drinking that sake with this killer. Matthew, with that information, I know your killer drinks sake. Matthew, for our victim's sake, let's hope you find that sake drinking murderer before they kill again. Matthew, did you find Ronin? We got him, Chief. But we also got a dead Yakuza boss and a motley list of suspects. Get to it, Archer. Right. To, the, to start, there's Sanjay again. He's been innocent so far, but he might actually end up guilty soon enough. And of course there's Ronin, a suspected somber agent colluding with the Yakuza. Why? We don't know. But he's hiding something. Possibly a murder. Konnichiwa, my fellow Bureau folk. Guess what I found? Ellie, we don't have time for your riddles again. Matthew, I think I got your killer. And it's someone you've already met. You found our killer? What? We'll have to sort this out in Chapter 2. Alright folks, it's Matthew, we're back. And we're now going to start Chapter 2 of A Death Wish. Matthew, did you find Ronin? We got him, Chief. But we also got a dead Yakuza boss and a bunch of suspects. Konnichiwa, Matthew. Guess what? I think I found your killer. And it's someone you've already met. Well, who is it? Remember that orphan girl you met in Beijing, Matthew? The one looking for her brother? You mean Chaco, the waitress? That's the one. Our satellite, Bob, picked up a security camera image of her. She was recently seen outside the crime scene with a gun. Chaco was outside the crime scene with a gun? <sighs> Maybe she found something was something out about her brother and went to seek her revenge. Matthew, you've got to comb the streets ASAP and see if we can find any traces of her. This is the unfortunate part about my computer. Sit tight, folks. I gotta sort this out. Alright. <clears throat> Faded diary. Alright, I know I got some work to do. Matthew, Chaco's nowhere to be found here. Let's see if she lets behind any clues. Trash? Really? Here's hoping there's something interesting in that trash can, Matthew. Let's get to searching. 
This diary is interesting. There's a photo of Chaco and her younger brother and some notes about his whereabouts. Chaco must have dropped it when she was caught casing the arcade. What's that stuck on the page, Matthew? Is that an origami crane like the one we found on the victim? There's also an entry that's faded. If it can give us information about Chaco or this crane, we need to dust it. Okay, this obviously isn't working out, so I have to sit, so sit tight one more time. Alright, I think I got this thing figured out. I decided to go to another computer. I'm at my grandma's right now. Let's examine the Faded Diary entry. Matthew, the diary page has information about Shaco's brother. Brother seen in Japan at Kabukicho Game Center under Yakuza control. Must find him. So Chieko's brother was here at the arcade. If Chieko feared her brother had been kidnapped by the Yakuza, she could have come here to rescue him and gunned down Yoto, Yuto in the process. Matthew, we need to get some answers from Chieko. She can't be far. About her quest diary. Chaco, we weren't expecting to find you in Tokyo. I go wherever my brother is. While in Beijing, I discovered he'd been seen here. I got here as fast as I could. We see that. We also see that you're quite skillful in the origami crane department. I've had some time as I've traveled searching for my brother. Origami has kept me focused. Ranger Matthew, I know he's been here, and this is dangerous Yakuza territory. I must find him soon. Is that why you got that gun of yours? Aren't you a little young to have one of those? I must do whatever it takes to get the answers I'm seeking. However, I no longer have the gun. Japanese laws are very strict. If we find any trace of your brother, we'll let you know. But do us a favor. Don't let us find you around here again. She's in the clear for now. A flyer. I gotta hand it to the Japanese. They have some interesting looking trash. Matthew, it looks like you found a flyer in the trash. It's all in Japanese except for a quote. Language is power, and there's the Union Jack on it. There's also a note written on it. Meet me at the game center to discuss our arrangement, and it's signed Yuto. At least the note's in English. I wonder what's this arrangement Yuto mentioned. Matthew, one person's trash is another person's treasure. Let's see if Tupac can translate this so we can find out who our victim met with. Okay, 12 hours. I'll get the results tonight. And for now, this is Matthew. See you then. Alright, folks, we're back. Let's get the results of the flyer from Armand DuPont. Bonjour, Matthew. I'm so pleased you've requested my translation services for this flyer. Did you know that Japanese is an agglutinative, agglutinative Mauritimes language with a pure vowel system and a lexically significant pitch accent? Um, what? Oh, Archer, you're such a monoglot. Hey, not true. I have many glots. Now, can you please just tell us what's written on that flyer? First of all, Jack, monoglot means you know only one language. As I'm sure Matthew has already guessed, your flyer is advertising English language classes. The woman pictured on the flyer is the teacher of Kyushi. Her name is Emily Wallace. What would a head Yakuza want with an English teacher? The message on the flyer mentions an arrangement. Knowing the Yakuza is a large organization with multinational con contacts, perhaps your victim requested classes. I've translated this Emily's contact information in case you'd like to have a word with her. Matthew, we've got new leads now. Let's contact Emily to ask about her arrangement with Yuto. And knowing she met with Yuto at the arcade, we should head back there for another sweep.
Oh, what the heck. I'm gonna investigate the arcade machines first. Claw machine? Pink cell phone. It's gonna help us out in the long run. You can already see it doing so. Matthew, looks like you've scored some new leads. Let's check them out. A claw machine? I love these things. Do you have a token, Matthew? Yeah, I know. We can just search the machine, but it won't be as fun. There's blood all over that pocket knife you grabbed, Matthew. Could it be the victim's blood? Let's get a sample of that. You think a sparkly flip phone can help? It does have an origami star dangling from it. Let's unlock it. Do everything right now. A gun. Matthew, I never played a claw machine where the prize was a gun. I guess that's what happens in a Yakuza arcade. All right, it's not an actual prize. I knew that. Being that this gun was hidden at the crime scene, this could be our murder weapon. And that means getting this gun over to our meathead in ballistics, Jonah. Okay, 12 hours. Pocket knife now. I was lucky. Matthew, now that we've got the blood sample from the pocket knife, let's go to the lab and put it under a microscope. Well, and let's find out whose blood this is. Sanjay? Uh oh. Matthew, the blood on the pocket knife doesn't belong to our victim. It belongs to Sanjay. How did Sanjay's blood get on this knife? I don't like the looks of this. Sanjay could be in danger, Matthew. We've got to find him now. About Sanjay's blood on the pocket knife. Sanjay, where are you? Are you okay? Ranger Matthew, why all the commotion? I'm just preparing the tokens for the day. We found this pocket knife with your blood on it. We thought something bad had happened to you. The knife was given to me by Watanabe-san so I could protect myself. This can be a dangerous place. But one night I found some leftover sake and finished the bottle. Then I decided to cut off my finger, see? You did what? Why would you do that? To prove my worth and show them I'm not weak. I'm sorry Sanjay, but Ranger Matthew and I can't let you do this to yourself. 
We're taking you into custody where we can keep you safe. Well, Sanjay is cleared for now because he doesn't do origami. GZA. DNR. Oh no, K80. Got it. Matthew, you've unlocked that sparkly flip phone, but whose is it? There's a text conversation between Sakura and Yuto. This must be Sakura's. I don't know what Yuto's saying, but Sakura seems angry with her message. Leave me alone. Seeing that paper star hanging on the phone, we can also get Sakura's into origami, and we know that, and we know how that folds into our investigation. Matthew, let's question Sakura as to why she was angry at the victim. I know I have another case to finish, but I'll have that done by the time this video is posted. Sakura, we want to know about the text conversation you had with Yuto before he died. Oh, you found my cell phone, Ranger Matthew. Domo arigato. I have all my selfies in that phone. Right, but what about the messages you sent to the guy who's now dead? Yuto had convinced me to go to a party with him and some friends. I didn't want to go, but he promised he'd leave me alone if I went. It was a dark place with people in leather clothing. Yuto kept giving me sake shots so I could relax, but I just wanted to go home. Um, okay. That doesn't sound good. When I asked to leave, Yuto tried to put drugs in my drink. I saw him do it. I barely made it out of there before something bad happened to me. I see how that could be frightening, but if you killed Yuto to get him to leave you alone for good, you'll go to jail, where the only photo you'll be taking is your mugshot. And let's ask Emily Wallace about her arrangements. Emily Wallace, we'd like to ask you some questions about Yuto Watanabe. From the message he left you, we take it you knew him. Mr. Watanabe had hired me for private English classes. He'd made some strategic international aliases and wanted to polish his conversational skills. Our classes consisted mostly of discussing world events over sake and sushi. You weren't afraid of mingling with someone as dangerous as Yuto? Mr. Watanabe was always, was always very respectful and paid well. What he did outside of our class was his business. Thanks for the information. We'll need to ask you some questions later, so please don't go too far. I'll let the gun run its course, so for now, this is Matthew. See you then. Alright folks, this is Matthew. We're back. I'm going to speed up the gun. Matthew, glad I can help out. I've come in contact with quite a few Yakuza. Needless to say, they don't play around. Well, we did find a gun in a claw machine, so that's kind of like playing. Sure, Archer. Anyway, this is an M1911. A standard issue sidearm for the US military that became popular with civilians. I compare the bullet holes on the Vic's body with the caliber of this gun. It's a match. I can confirm this gun is your murder weapon. While inspecting the gun I discovered a faded serial number. I checked the registration on it and found its original owner. The only thing is they're dead. If the owner is dead who fired the shot? I can help you there. My daddy checked out the gun. He said there were traces of highly chlorinated water mixed with gun residue around the grip. Oh, hey, June. Didn't see you. I'm playing hide-and-seek with Uncle Jonah. I'm a great hider. Try to find me, Ranger Matthew. As Uncle Jonah was saying, in Japan, the best place to find highly chlorinated water like that is at a public bath. My guess is your killer takes Sento baths. Ooh, I love baths. I also love grenades. Where'd you find that? Whatever you do, don't throw it. You got your hands full, Jonah. 
We'll come back later. So then, Matthew, we're hunting a killer who bathes in steaming hot murder. Holy God. What a rascal. Matthew, what's Sanjay doing in the station? We need to keep a close eye on him, Chief, and the Bureau is the best place for that. I feel for him, but we're not a babysitting service, Archer. Now, what's the status of the investigation? We're making progress, Chief. Matthew found the murder weapon, and our suspect list is tightening up. Chaco's on a hunt to find her brother, and will stop at nothing until she does, including possibly axing the head Yakuza. Sakura is clearly shaken up by the dangerous advances made by Yuto. She was angry, but was she angry enough to murder him? There's also the English teacher, Emily. Could something have gone wrong during one of their classes that ended in Yuto's death? Hey Archer, aren't you supposed to be watching Sanjay? Yeah, Carmen, why do you ask? Because he's gone! What? Uh-oh. We'll have to find Sanjay in Chapter 3. Alright folks, we're back. Let's start Chapter 3 of A Death Wish. Hey Archer, I know you're busy with the investigation of Yuto Watanabe's death, but aren't you supposed to be watching Sanjay? Yeah, Carmen, why do you ask? Because he's gone! What? What do you mean Sanjay's gone? Elias saw him go into the bathroom, but he never came out. When he went in to check, he noticed the bathroom window was open. Sanjay must have climbed out and ran away. But you should all but you should know all this, because you were supposed to be watching him. Darn it, that kid always getting us in trouble. Matthew, we need to find him and fast. I bet you he's going back to the arcade. Matthew, let's hit the streets and intercept him. Paper. Torn pieces. Uh, locket. Where the heck is the locket? Oh boy. Got it. Not my best score, but hey, still learning the ropes. Sanjay's nowhere in sight, Matthew. Are there any indications of where he went? That torn thing you found looks like an envelope. Could it be a clue? Let's p put it back together. Isn't that Ronan in the crumpled newspaper article you picked up? He's standing next to Yuto. Too bad the headline's in Japanese. You're right. Those are some impressive tattoos. I wonder if they mean anything. Let's see if our database can help us find a match for them. You think that locket can help, Matthew? Good catch. On the back of the locket is an engraving, but it's faded. All you can read is the name Watanabe. Watanabe? Like our victim Yuto Watanabe? What? Was this his? Let's dust it to see if we can retrieve the faded message. Matthew, we may not have found Sanjay yet, but you dug up a bunch of clues, so let's get to work. Okay, I'm gonna get some stars, so sit tight. Alright, I got myself three of the four stars here. So, let's go ahead and examine the newspaper. May not have found Sanjay in the crime scene, but uh, at least you got some clues.
There we are. Yakuza Tattoo. Matthew, the database search on the tattoos all over Ronan's body are a match with those traditionally worn by the Yakuza. Wait, so Ronan is Yakuza? We knew something was up. Ronan is both a somber agent and a Yakuza. But why are these two groups working together? Matthew, Ronan is going to have a lot of explaining to do when we get our hands on him. That image over here is pretty disturbing. Let's question Ronan now. Ronan, we know the truth about you. You're both somber and Yakuza. What do you have to say about that? Yes, I'm Yakuza. There's nothing shameful about that. We do more than just drink sake, soak in senso baths, and kill people. We're an organization built on honor and pride, ready to help our community in times of need. There's, that's more than I can say for your bureau. Really? The Bureau doesn't work with known terrorist organizations and the brainwashing of innocent children. Why is the Yakuza working with Sombra? Before his death, Yuto made a strategic alliance with Sombra. It involved children and money. And the deal was going well until Yuto became greedy. That's probably what got him killed. What were you doing with those children? We want answers. Me? All I did was teach them origami. If Ranger Matthew finds out you harmed these children in any way, we'll throw you in jail faster than you can say Yakuza. Now Ronan's in the running. With love to the future Mrs. Watsonabe. The inscription on the locket reads, With love to the future Mrs. Watanabe. To the future Mrs. Watanabe? Was you two engaged to marry someone? Good eye, Matthew. That does look like a serial number. YJL 187420. Let's get this locket over to Ellie to see if he can dig up any info on it. And you know what? I still got a week to do this case, so... I might as well just let it run. Torn pieces now. I'm still confused confused as to what this envelope you taped together is. But on the back there's a message. Sanjay, if you ever need help, you know where to find me. And it's signed by Chaco. Chaco? How does she know Sanjay? If Chaco gave this to Sanjay, she must know where he is. We need to talk to her now. Let's see if we can get his whereabouts out of Chaco. Chaco, we found the message you left for Sanji on an envelope. Where is he? That's not an envelope, Ranger Mouth. It's an Omamori, a good luck charm. But whatever it is, you need to tell us where he is. We're trying to help him. No, I won't tell you where Sanjay is. I couldn't protect my brother, but I can protect him. You think you're tough, but you're just a teenage girl. And it'll take more than a good luck charm to keep Sanjay safe. I can protect Sanjay better than you can, Ranger Matthew. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want you to know where he is, and I won't betray him. Listen up, Chaco. Ranger Matthew is the one in charge here. One more outburst, and we'll take you into custody for obstructing a criminal investigation. Alright, I'll see you guys for when the lock and inscription runs its course. So for now, this is Matthew. See you then. Alright, folks, we're back. Let's get the results of the lock and inscription from Elliot. Matthew, any luck finding Sanjay? Not yet, but we're on it. Any news on that locket we sent you? I do have some info, but it's not about Sanjay. It's actually about another one of your suspects. I researched the serial number on the locket. 
It was commissioned to a jeweler as a gift to one Emily Wallace. Emily? The English teacher? Are you telling me she was the one engaged to Yuto? Not exactly. You see, it wasn't Yuto Emily was engaged to. It was his nephew, Shiro. Emily was engaged to Yuto's nephew? Why didn't she tell us that? We need to find the Shiro guy and ask him some questions. That's not possible. Shiro's dead. Died before he and Emily got married. Well, Emily's fiancé might be dead, but Emily isn't. And we need to get some answers from her now. We're sorry for your loss, Miss Wallace, but why didn't you tell us you were engaged to Yuto's nephew? We found the locket he gave you. I didn't think it was important. He's been dead for a year now. Shiro was Yakuza, working for Yuto. He was killed trying to protect his uncle. So you weren't just Yuto's English teacher. You were his nephew's bride-to-be, but your fiancé got killed in the line of duty. Gives you a solid motive for murder. I've made peace with Cheryl's death. It's life. Nowadays, excuse me, I fill my time teaching English and learning origami from the elderly. Ranger Matthew, why aren't you investigating the Suzuki girl? Yutsil never left her alone. I even saw him follow her into the women's side of the Sento Bats. She was very upset. Ranger Matthew will decide who's the suspect here, and you just made it to the top of our list. Make peace with that. Matthew, I'm worried about Sanjay, but we're so close to catching Yuto's killer, we've got to soldier on. Great thinking, considering Yuto's blood was on that sake set in his office, he must have first met his assassin there. And we need to find any last clues before the Yakuza make them all disappear. Let's head back to the Dragon's Nest ASAP. LT work in America. And now if you buy a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, you get one free. Alright. One more crime scene left. Japanese trick box. Scorpion. Corkscrew. Gone fishbowl. Tim. Matthew, I wonder what that crystal powder on the arcade poster you found is. Knowing the various ventures of the Yakuza, I wouldn't be surprised if this was something illegal. Whatever it is, we need to get a sample of that powder ASAP. That intricate Japanese box is packed with all kinds of Yakuza stuff. Let's dig through it for clues, quickly. I'm going to get some stars quick, so sit tight. Alright, folks, I got some more stars. This is Am of the Arcade poster. Did it. Matthew, let's get that crystal powder sample we found on the arcade poster over to Lars. Stat. So you take me seriously, eh? What else can I do? Okay, 15 hours. Give us a minute.
keychain? I'd say that's just a katana keychain you found in the box, Matthew. But with the small origami crane dangling from it, this has to be the killers. We need to get this keychain over to ours now. Alright, I'll see you guys for when these, these two run their courses. <clears throat> Alright folks, we're back. Let's get the results of the crystal powder. Matthew, you're nearing the finish line of this case. Let's see if I can help you cross it. The powder sample you sent me was not what I expected. Surprisingly, the sample was white quartz crystal mixed with the victim's blood. White quartz crystal? What's that, some kind of drug? Nope, it's a common yet powerful stone known for cleansing and purifying the energy of the chakras. When worn, it helps protect the wearer from negative outside influences. It also allows for increased confidence and power. So you're saying whoever killed Yuto was somehow wearing this crystal? Yep. In Japan, the trend is to wear the power crystals as functional jewelry. My guess is your killer wears a power crystal bracelet. Matthew, our killer will face a long fall from power once we lock them up for murder. And the keychain? I'll cut to the chase, Matthew. I can confirm this keychain you brought me belongs to the killer. Just as Matthew suspected, the crane gave it away. It did as well as the Japanese inscription written on the keychain sword. It's a very deliberate one. Revenge. So our killer was hunting for their revenge mini sword and gun in hand? Absolutely, but one clue gave them away. I found yellow fibers on the key ring. I tested the fibers. It's a mix of cotton and other synthetic elements, the type you find in clothing. Mouthing from those fibers, I could confirm your killer is wearing yellow clothes. I know the killer will be yellow with fear once you get your hands on them, Matthew. Matthew, the time to arrest our killer has come. Let's do this. It's not Sanjay. It is not Suzuki Sakura. <coughs> it is not Ronan Ozawa. It is not Tsukata Cheko. It's Emily Wallace. <coughs> Emily Wallace, you're under arrest for the murder of Yuto Watanabe. But why did you do it? Ranger Matthew, you've got the wrong person. I had nothing to do with Yuto's death. I'd like to believe you, but we found one of your origami cranes stuffed in his suit pocket. Looks like all those origami classes paid off in murder. Nonsense, Ranger Matthew. Yuto was my fiancé's uncle. He was like family. I valued his time. You mean like the time you drank sake together before you shot him? I'm just an English teacher. I don't have any claims to power, money, or glory. You don't have a motive. But we do have your power crystal bracelet and the yellow fibers on your revenge keychain. You must have known that being a Yakuza was a dangerous lifestyle. Why blame Yuto for your fiancé's choices? Yes, I knew that being a Yakuza meant you could die at any time, but I didn't think his own uncle would kill him. What? Yuto killed his own nephew? After Shiro and I met, he decided to leave the Yakuza, but Yuto didn't approve. Shiro left anyway, taking a lot of his uncle's money in the process. On our wedding day, Yuko stormed in with his goons and assassinated Shiro before my very own eyes. Before we could even say I do. And then Yuto turned his gun on me. Yuto tried to kill you too? He left me for dead next to the corpse of my fiancé. I swore if I made it through, I spent every waking moment planning my retaliation. I plotted my revenge, slowly, patiently, one crane after another, waiting for the right time to strike. You should have seen the look on Yuto's face when he saw my gun, Cheryl's old gun, 
justice was being served. He tried to commit seppuku, but there was no way I was letting him do it. He needed to die by my hands. Wow, that's one heck of a story. What Yuto did was cruel, but it doesn't give you just cause to take someone's life. I'm sorry, but Miss Wallace, you're under arrest. Miss Wallace, you stand trial for the murder of Yuto Watanabe, head of the Watanabe Gumi organization in Japan. How do you plead? Guilty, Your Honor. I did it, and I'd do it again if could. All Shiro and I wanted was to start a new life together, but Yuto would have rather killed his own nephew than live with the shame Shiro caused him. So I set out to honor the memory of my fiance, payback as a woman on a mission. You single-handedly took down the head of one of the most notorious buryu buryoku in Japan. That's impressive, but I cannot condone vigilantism in any case. Thereby, this court sentences you to 10 years in prison. Revenge is a dish best served cold, and I served mine in heels. Matthew, I can't believe Emily managed to take down the head of one of the most violent crime organizations in the world, all by herself. Now that's dedication. But you're right, if people start taking justice into their own hands, there will never be any real justice. And now that this case is closed, we can continue our search for Sanjay. We need to find him before it's too late. We've also got to get to the bottom of Sombra's child brainwashing scheme. Something foul is at play. Matthew, our work's cut out for us. Let's do this. And let's take a look at the other ones. Sanjay, clear from the start. Suzuki Sakura, no yellow. Rona Nozawa, no power crystal bracelet. Sukata Chico cleared early. It was Emily Wallace. I'll see you guys for the additional investigation. Alright folks, we're back. Let's go to Innocence Lost 5-6. Matthew, we solved Yuto's murder, but we're still far from knowing what Sombra wants of the children they're recruiting. And Sanjay's Houdini-esque disappearance act didn't help. He's in serious danger. Sombra doesn't joke around. Matthew, this whole Sombra brainwashing thing is unsettling. With everything going on, I need to keep a close eye on the triplets. I keep telling Lars we should send the girls back to their grandparents, but he thinks I'm being overprotective. I just want to protect my children. Speaking of... Where are they? Have you seen them, Matthew? Sorry, Angel. I haven't seen them in a while, but I'm sure they're fine. Archer, take it from a mom. It's never a good sign whenever kids are quiet. Or missing. Don't worry. We'll find them. Maybe they're playing outdoors. Matthew, why don't you go with Angel to see if the girls are outside and then join me in the arcade for more clue hunting on Sanjay's whereabouts. I don't see the girls around here anywhere. Huh. That looks like a broken that looks like broken doll pieces you have there, Matthew. Wait a minute. The face resembles that of a doll the girls have. Could this be theirs? Matthew, can you help me put these pieces together? Maybe it can help us find the girls. Ay ay ay.
Just got nine. Matthew, this doll you put together is Dolly Doll. It's the girl's favorite doll. How did it end up broken? And what are these dark smudges all over it? They never let Dolly get this dirty. You're right. A sample of these smudges can tell us what happened to Dolly Doll and the girls. Okay. Examine the dirty doll. Nice. Matthew, now that you have a sample of the smudges on the doll, let's see if Lars can tell us what it is. Six hours. I'll get the results tomorrow, of course. Okay. Crushing wounds, school uniform. Paper bag and rabbit. Matthew, we're here to find clues that can help track down Sanjay. Are you sure a lost and found box is going to help? Okay, I know when you get your hunches. There's no stopping you. Let's look through the box. Bunny camera. Matthew, I can't believe all the stuff people leave behind. Like that colorful camera you found in that lost and found box. You think this can help us? Good point. This camera might have taken pictures of the Yakuza, or even better, Sanjay. Matthew, no use wasting time browsing through photos. Maybe Elliot can give us a hand with this. Nine hours. I'll get the results tomorrow morning. So for now, this is Matthew. See you then. How is that coffee? All right, folks, we're back. Let's get the results of the dark smudges now. Matthew, the girls aren't missing. They've been at the station the whole time, playing hide and seek in Elliot's lab. They're safe. What a relief. Then, how did Dolly Doll end up on the street? And what are those smudges all over it? Well, I ran the sample under the microscope. Turns out the smudges are chocolate. Chocolate? All over Dolly? How did that happen? Good question, Muffin. I extracted DNA from the chocolate and found a match. It's our adorable daughter, April. Knowing that April could never tear the doll apart by herself, I tested the DNA sample further and just as I suspected. The DNA in the chocolate smudges actually come from all three girls. They tore up Dolly? Matthew, those girls need a good talking to at once. Let's ask them why they were torn apart. April, May, June? What's this nonsense about ripping up Dolly? I thought you girls loved her. I do, Mommy, but April was hogging her. I wanted to play with her. Oh yeah, while well, you were hogging all the chocolate May stole from Elliot's office, you weren't contributing, you big chocolate head. 
I didn't steal it, it was your stupid idea, and I'm not stupid. Girl, stop this right now. You will behave like, like young ladies, not like some savage beast. We're not being beasts, we're not just being weak, just like Shaco taught us. Shaco, you will stop this nonsense immediately. Stealing chocolates, tearing apart Dolly, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Now, apologize to Ranger Matthew for taking up valuable time with your shenanigans. Alright, Mommy. We're sorry, Ranger Matthew. We didn't mean it. Here, take this, Ranger Matthew. It's all of our Tooth Fairy money. You can use it to find the bad people. Honey, I'm really concerned for the girls. They're not acting like themselves. They've been around this orphan case too long. My little mother hen, don't worry. The girls are fine. We should send them back to your parents as far away from here as possible. I keep having these terrible nightmares where the girls end up with Sombra doing horrible things. Baby, relax. They're safe here with us. We never let anything like that happen. I don't know. I've got the feeling something terrible is going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. Hey buddy, sorry to interrupt your online game thing, but Matthew sent you a camera and we need to know what's on it now. Almost there and score! Okay, about the camera. It's your standard bunny eared video recorder, Big, with Jap. Bunny eared video recorder. Big with the Japanese girls, like Sakura. It's her camera. Apparently, Sakura has a vlog about photo booths, mostly random stuff, but I did find something you might want to watch. Yahoo friends, welcome to Sakura Snapshot Adventures. Today I'm going to talk about... What's that noise? Listen kid, don't be weak. If you want to show you're contributing, you will do this. But, but, I'm just a token attendant. Now go up to that guy and make him pay what he owes, or else. You're right, Ozawa-san, I'm not weak, I can do this. And here, take this, it's for protection. Oh, sorry viewers, I think I'll film my video somewhere else. Uh-oh. What the- Matthew, did Rona give Sanjay a gun with direct orders to go shake someone down? Is this what sommer has been doing with the orphans? Making them into little Yakuza gangsters? This is horrible. We've got to shut this operation down before these kids get hurt. Especially Sanjay. Matthew, we need answers, and Ronan is going to give them to us whether he likes it or not. I agree. About the orders he gave Sanjay? Ronan, we knew you were no good, but now we have the proof. Using children to do your dirty work? That's despicable. The Yakuza's aren't about honor, they're about violence and shame. As I said before, Ranger Matthew, we made a deal with Sombra. We train the children, they give us money. Train the children? What kind of training would require guns and intimidation? I couldn't tell you. We were just instructed to prepare the kids for the next phase. Next phase? What's that? And where's Sanjay? Was he done training and then sent off for his next phase? Sorry, Ranger Matthew, that's all I know, but you look fatigued. Have some of my meal. It'll give you a boost. Matthew, Sanjay's on the run, armed and headed to treacherous waters. The race is on to find him alive and safe. Great thinking, Matthew. The Yakuza were in charge of this Sombra orphan training, and we know Sanjay's Sombra. I'm sure we can find some clue into Sanjay's whereabouts in Yuto's office. So it looks like I'm probably going to have to do one more analysis.
cell phone box. Matthew, we're looking for any clues of where Sanjay could have run off to. Let's see what you got. You think that cell phone box has something to do with Sombra? Are they giving away free phone plans? You're right. Sanjay's name is written on that box. And there's a message for him, but it's difficult to read. Someone must have given Sanjay this phone. Matthew, let's dust the note to see what it says. Call me when you get there, Chaco. The message on the cell phone box reads, Call me when you get there, and it's signed by Chaco. Not only does Chaco know where Sanjay is, she gave him this phone so they could stay in touch. Matthew signed Chaco started telling us the truth. About the phone she gave Sanjay? Chaco, we know you gave Sanjay a phone. You can't keep lying to us. Where is he? I don't know. Sanjay said he was just... Sanjay just said he was leaving Tokyo. I gave him the phone in case he got into trouble and needed help. On the bus, you specifically tell... You specifically tell him to call you when he gets there. Where's there, Chaco? I got news my brother was last seen in the south. I told Sanjay. He said he was heading in that direction, so he offered to help find him. Do you know exactly where the south, where south he went? You know Sanjay Sombra now. Wherever he's going, he's in serious danger. Ranger Matthew, I don't know. He was supposed to call me, but I haven't heard from him yet. I hope you're telling the truth, for your sake and for Sanjay's. I wish I could do more, but I did find this antique warrior kimono in Yuto's office. Perhaps it can help you along your journey, Ranger Matthew. Koon. Matthew, Chaco mentioned Sanjay was heading south, but that could be anywhere, and we don't have much time to spare. You're right, maybe Elliot can track down Sanjay's cell phone somehow to get a more precise location. It's worth a shot. Matthew, we know Sanjay's no longer in Tokyo. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly where he is. This wouldn't have happened if you hadn't let him out of your sight, Archer. Don't you realize the danger Sanjay's in? Jeez, Carmen, relax. We'll find him. I didn't peg you for the maternal type. Hey, guys, I could hear you arguing all the way down the hall. It's a miracle Matthew continues to work with you two. Anyway, I take it you're wondering where Sanjay is. Fear not, I found him. Using the serial number on the cell phone box, I located Sanjay's phone. I just called up the cell phone provider, gave them the serial number, and voila, they triangulated his phone signal. See, Carmen? We found Sanjay. Elliot, please tell us you got his exact location. Of course I did. Sanjay's in southern Japan, on Kyushu Island. Matthew, we're back on track. You heard the kid. Sanjay's on Kyushu Island. We're not off the hook yet, Matthew. We have to find Sanjay and put an end to Sombra's evil scheme. Let's hope Kyushu Island has the answers we're looking for. I still wish they included the burgers with the sticker packs. I'm going to have to conserve my energy even extra. Release May 3rd. That's in two days. So I'm going to hold off on an Elite Mode case. I've already done one, actually, in Grimsboro again. And it has a case I've already been done. 
and I've already done before, but I did it in sticker mode just to see, and it's no different. See him doing what I can. Case 30, not unlocked yet. So for now, this is Matthew. See you then for Case 30 in the World Edition.